Alhamdulillah <coughs> Unquestionably, the praise, the perfect praise, belongs to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, we seek His forgiveness. We seek, <clears throat> we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whosoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu wasallam is his servant and his messenger. Allah tells us in the Quran, "Audhu billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim," to say, "Qul inna salati wa." Nusuki wa ma yahya wa ma mati lillahi rabbil alamin la sharika lahu umirtu wa anna awalul muslimin surely my sacrifice my worship my life and my death are all for Allah lord of all systems of knowledge he has no partners, so I am commanded, so I am the first to be Muslim. We thank Allah for this day of Juma. We thank Allah for waking us <coughs> for the best day of the week. We thank Allah for another opportunity, another breath to show our gratitude to him for making us Muslims. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah al-Hadi the guide, the way, and we pray and we strive so that others are guided to this mercy and to this blessing. Judaism, spread as a racial religion, it is an old religion, but it has few adherents because people are born Jewish and it's not a proselytizing Religion. In other words, they are not actively seeking converts or salvation for others. They are not particularly interested in conveying truth to us. There are roughly 18 million Jews on earth today. That's a small number in comparison to 8 billion people on this earth. In contrast, Alice Lund, 
and Christianity are a proselytizing religion. They and we are supposed to be actively telling you about the truth and inviting you to God's way. As such, there are over 2 billion Christians on earth and almost 2 billion Muslims on earth. Which means when you are actively seeking converts or reverts, you will find them. When you don't, you won't. Now Christianity spread from Paul and through the mixture of Christianity and paganism that came into existence. We Muslims here, most of us being Muslims here, we do have a guest. I appreciate you, brother. You. When I say Allah, I mean the God. So this is an irrefutable fact that is a mixture between the two. Romans and Greeks took over the movement from a man born in Palestine. They became the religious foundation for Western society. And Western culture embarked on colonizing the entire world. In doing so, they made every conquering nation accept Christianity as their religion. This is precisely how they have over 2 billion followers today. Their religion was spread by the sword, or more accurately, by the gun. While Al-Islam was spread through da'wah and natural interaction. So Judaism was never offered to us, and Christianity was forced upon us. And we keep it today out of fear and ignorance. Not, not the people here. I mean the majority of our African-American community in America, period. Ignorance sounds harsh, but I mean we don't know. Not knowing the way of Al-Islam or the true way of Isa, alayhi salam, or Jesus. You know, they say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets through God but by him. So it sparks fear in us. Or they say every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. And this puts fear in us. But this is what the religion that you had before it was taken from you and stolen from you and forced Christianity upon you. This is what it says. In al dina in the islamu the religion before Allah is Al-Islam. The Islam, the submission to God's will. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَبْتَاجِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ وَأْفَالَ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَاتِ مِنْ خَاشِرٍ It means, Whoever seeks a religion other than Al-Islam, it will never be accepted from them. And in the hereafter, they will be of the losers. Now, only one of these religions is telling the truth. Only one of them is right. Which one is it? Now, I'm going to give you a long quote to answer this question. It was from some years back. Maybe when I am mentioning this quote, you may get who I'm referring to. It begins, you, if you and I know history, then we will know the right religion. The only way that we can be confused or mixed up about what is the right religion is if we don't know history. In fact, if you know history, then you know something about God. If you know history, you know something about God's religion. If you know history, you know, know something about God's people. <clears throat> and if you know something of history, you know something of God's plan and God's purpose. And as I say, the only people who don't know history are the American so-called Negro. Maybe y'all starting to get an idea who I'm talking about here. If you know history, for an example, whenever you look at Christianity, the only way to explain it is through the knowledge of history. Why is it called Christianity? 
It is called Christianity because they say it was named after a man that they call Christ, who was born 2,000 years ago. Now, you and I, brothers and sisters, know the earth, this is a world, is an old world. The universe has been here for a long time. I think if all of you will agree that the universe is older than 2,000 years old. And you will also agree that the universe was made by God himself. I'm still quoting here. That God created the universe and God created the people on the earth. God didn't create the universe or wouldn't have made a sky and a sun in the sky or planets rotated. You and I wouldn't inhabit this planet, which we live in. God would not have done all these things and not given us a religion. God put his religion here at the creation of the universe. God's religion is as old as the universe. God's religion is older than the universe. Now then, since you and I agree, and you and I agree that Christ was born 2,000 years ago, which means that Christianity is only 2,000 years old. This can't have been, this couldn't have been God's religion. Your knowledge of history shows that God couldn't call his religion Christianity because Christianity is only 2,000 years old. Brothers, could you come up a little bit? You can come over here just in case the sisters come in. The more sisters come in. Can we see the importance of history? If you know history, then you would, if you don't know history, then you would think that this is God's religion. And you would be running around practicing this and wondering why everybody else isn't practicing this. But some people have a better knowledge of history than others. It is only people whose knowledge of history is limited who will jump up and say Christianity is the name of God's religion. If Christianity wasn't always the name of God's religion, it can't now be the name of God's religion. God doesn't change the name of his religion. God doesn't even change his religion. God doesn't change his mind. God's mind is made up from the beginning. He doesn't have to change his mind because he knows all that there is to know. All the way through the wheel of time. He never has to change his mind. His mind is made up. His knowledge is complete. It is all-encompassing. All Do you understand? Is what the brother is saying. So once you see, and I think you see, that it is impossible for God to call this Christianity his religion, what did God call his religion? Christians are the ones that say God called the religion Christianity. But God was here before Christians came on the scene. They tell you that Christianity had the beginning with the Romans. One of the emperors supposedly accepted the teachings of Jesus' disciples. Then they called the religion Christianity. But Jesus didn't call it Christianity. This wasn't the name until two or three hundred years after Jesus. Any history book will tell you this. Any Bible will tell you this. Any, theolo any theologist a theologian would tell you this. Those who study deeper will say before it was Christianity, it was called <coughs> Judaism. Isn't that what they say? Is what the brother says. Named after a man called Judah. This right here doesn't follow logic. If Christianity was named after Christ, and Christ was born, before Christ was born, the religion was called Judaism, but this comes from the son of Jacob whose name was Judah. History tells us that Jacob was serving God before Judah was born, which shows that Jacob's religion couldn't have been Judaism. <coughs> and Isaac was Jacob's father, and he was serving God before Jacob was born. And Jacob, <coughs> Jacob and Isaac was Jacob's grandfather, and Abraham was, Je was Judah's, excuse me, Isaac was Judah's grandfather, and Abraham, alayhi salam, was Judah's great-grandfather. Meaning Abraham was on the scene long before Judah came on the scene. Now you can't call Abraham's religion Judaism. Because there is no such thing as Judaism in Abraham's day. There was no such thing as Judaism in Isaac's day or in Jacob's day. 
So what was religion before was called Judaism? Ibrahim is the name of the father of all of them. He is the progenitor of all of them. He is the one, he is one of God's first servants, one of the first to submit to Allah. This quote says God, I'm sorry. If you see this, then find out what Abraham's religion was. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us that Abraham's religion was the religion of Islam. Islam only means complete submission to God. Complete obedience to God. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God so much that when he thought God asked him to kill his son, he grabbed his son to kill his son. For God, showing that he believed in Islam. What does Islam mean again? Obey God, submit to God. <coughs> So that this name, if you notice, has no connection, no association with the birth of a man. It's not a man's name. It doesn't come from a man. Buddhism was named after a man called Buddha. Confucianism was named after a man called Confucius. Likewise, Judaism and Christianity were named after men. But Islam is not connected with any man. Islam is independent of any man. Islam is an act, which means submit completely to God or obey God. And when you say that your religion is Islam, then you are a Muslim. So to clarify this, you must, this is what you must do. You must know history. If you don't have a knowledge of history, you'll run around calling yourself a Christian, swearing that you are serving God. If you don't know history, you'll run around calling your religion, Judaism, swearing you are serving God. If your religion is Confucianism, then you are following Confucius. If your religion is Buddhism, then you're following Buddha. If your religion is Judaism, then you are following Judah. And they are dead, is what is quoted here. And if you follow them, you will die too. This is where it leads you. Whether your leader, where your leader is, is where you will be. We who follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we believe in Islam. We don't believe in Muhammad. We believe in Islam. He teaches us the religion of Islam, and he asks the crowd, "Do you understand the difference?" Christian Christians, they believe in Christ. They believe that Christ is God. They believe that He was crucified and rose from the dead and went up into the sky. That's what they believe, and they believe that because they don't know. History. Jews have a greater knowledge of religion than Christians do. The history of Christians' religion go back 2,000 years. The history of Jewish religion go back 4,000 years. The religion of Al-Islam has no limits. If you notice, Christians can only go back to the Greek Empire. The Jews can go back to, the Egypt, Egypt, to Egypt or Babylon. If you know this, one goes back further than the other. But now the history of Islam, the Muslim history, has no limits. It has no chain that is broken. The Christians and the Jews combined go back to whom? To Adam. And they stop there. And they say beyond that nothing happened. That this is because they don't know. Their knowledge of history has an influence on the religion that they accept. That's the end quote. And sisters, these are the words of El Hajj Malik El Shabazz in December 1962, almost 60 years ago, who was taught by a man who learned it 40 years before that. So 100 years ago, truth was being conveyed to people. He is explaining in the simplest terms that Al Islam is the truth. We are all able to do this in the simplest forms. By the way, the same thing is true of Hinduism, of Jainism, of Zoroastrianism. All begin with a man or a group of people. He explains that Al-Islam is the oldest religion known to man. And he did this 60 years ago. Let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness. <clears throat> Al 
Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ayya sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabihi wa man wala ajma'in. <coughs> the perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian evolver of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader Muhammad <coughs> sallallahu wa sallam, upon his family, upon his companions and his followers, all of them, all of us, all together. Another example given by El Haj Malik El Shabaj and Malcolm X was about the royal family of, of Europe or any, any country differing on and how they differ from presence. Royalty wants its ancestry. Royalty knows its history. They know where they come from. You can't have to be a king and not be able to trace your forefathers. The only way you can be a king is to be born a king. If you take away his history, he doesn't know his forefathers, then he's like a regular, ordinary person. He says the same is true of Jesus, of Jews and Christians, because the Jews have the longest record of history. They can call themselves the chosen people. And Christians can't contend with this. They say they are the chosen people because their history doesn't go back far enough. They can't go back to the time when the choice was made. The Hebrews can go back so far and say this actually happened. But the reason they can't, they can claim this is because nobody is able to deal with them except the Muslims. That's the end of the quote for the second quote. The Muslim can prove that everyone was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their prophets were sent to every nation. This truth is powerful, brothers and sisters, and we have it. Allah blessed us with it. But this is the issue. He said this in December 1962, almost 60 years ago. In America, there are 333 million people, yet there are only 3.45 million Muslims. We are 1%. We make up the 1% of all of America. But we got the truth. At that time, he was teaching a foreign form of al-Islam, an incorrect form of al-Islam, but he was talking to African Americans. There are 41.6 million African Americans on earth or in America today. Yet, African Americans only have 1% of African Americans are Muslim between 660,000 to 825,000. And many of them are reverts from prison. Conversion to Islam is a practice that is common among African Americans in prison. Is what this study says. 80% of prisoners who find faith, which they find it in prison and they find Al-Islam. The majority of African Americans, but there are a growing number of Hispanic, Hispanics who are also accepting Al-Islam. You see, there's a concerted effort in the prisons to teach them out Islam, teach them discipline, teach them religion. But we need a concerted effort outside of the prison. 99% of African Americans walking around oblivious to the truth. 99% of Americans are walking around oblivious to the truth. How could Malcolm tell them 60 years ago with part of the truth and we are quiet with all of the truth? Now what I quoted in the first part of this khutbah can be corroborated from the Qur'an. He says that Allah created the heavens and the earth, and obviously we know this. And Allah says what is translated, indeed your Lord, indeed your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days and established himself on the throne. Certainly Allah created the heavens and the earth, earth as he said. Malcolm said that Ibrahim salam, could not have been a Jew. Allah attests to this in the Quran. He says, Abraham, Ibrahim salam, was neither a Christian or a Jew. He was an upright Muslim. He could not have practiced Judaism or Christianity. He was an upright Muslim. That's what Allah tells us. In fact, Allah says that he was the one that named us Muslims. 
before this and in the Quran, Allah gave us this name as Muslims. And our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says we are born on the fitrah, a predisposition, a pattern towards Al-Islam. But our parents make us Christian or Jews. Ibrahim, when praying about his children and his children's children and his children's children, when at first he was praying about Ismail, he says, to Allah, make us Muslim. And to my descendants, make them Muslims. Do we do that? Do we pray for our family? Pray to Allah that he keeps us guided on this straight path and our family. Because Allah says, save yourself and save your family. And Moses, when he saw the mountains crumble, said he was the first to believe. And Noah said, I am commanded to be amongst the Muslims. And Jesus says, I am a, I am a servant of Allah. And Jesus' disciples said, we believe in Allah and we testify that we are Muslims. This is all in the Quran. These are prophets and men following prophets who submitted their will to the will of Allah. They practice Al-Islam, the submission to the will of God. Not what you think it is or what someone else thinks it is. Allah says, Inna dina indallahi al-Islam. Religion before Allah, the religion, the religion before Allah is Al-Islam, the submission to the will of Allah. It says, do you inform Allah of your religion? Don't nobody care what your religion is. Allah created you. He doesn't care what your deen is. When Allah knows whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, and Allah has perfect knowledge of all things, we do not decide what submission to Allah looks like. We don't decide how to submit to Allah. To Allah. That's what everyone else in this world is doing. They are following a person or following themselves, deciding how they are going to submit to Allah. Allah talks about people who regard their acceptance of Islam as a favor to you. Allah tells us and tells the prophet, do you regard, do not regard your, your Islam, it says Islam akum, your Islam as a favor to me. Rather, it is Allah who has put a, give a favor to you and guided you. It says Islam akum, meaning you, what you think al-Islam is, what you think submission to Allah is. But al-Islam is what God decrees and says it is. You see, we have the same religion, the same deen as the sun, the moon, the bees, the trees. Allah says in the Quran, do they not see that a Allah, that to Allah, bow down all those in the heavens and all those on earth, as well as the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, and all living things, as well as many human beings. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam says the Muslim will follow the wrong ways of Jews and Christians so completely and so literally that they will, if they go into a hole, we'll follow behind them into a hole of a lizard. When they should be listening to us, they should be following us. We are the one with Al-Islam. Allah says, and they ask those, and, and ask those who are given the scriptures and those who are unlearned, have you submitted yourself to Allah? That's what we should be asking these 99% of the people walking around here who don't have Al-Islam. Are you a Muslim? Are you practicing Al-Islam? Allah says, do they desire a way other than Allah's, knowing that all those in the heavens and the earth will submit to his will willingly or unwillingly, even if you don't want to. He's giving you a grace period right now because you're going to return to him. So if we open our mouths, brothers and sisters, we'll be more than the 1%. Allahu <laughs> 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 <laughs>
قد قام تيتلا قد قام تيتلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وطيني وزيتون وطور سيني وهذا بلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم ردتناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين أمنوا وأملوا صالحات فلاجهم أجرهم غير ممنون فما يكاتبوك بدو بدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمي الحمد الله أكبر Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين القارية ما القارية وما أدراك ما القارية يوم يقول نسوك الفراش المنفوش وتأكل جبالك الإثم المنفوش فأما من تقولت موازنه فهو في إشة ربية وأما من كفت موازنه فأمه حاوية وما أدراك ما هي نهر هاوية الله أكبر سمي الله لم ينحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة
announcements. Um, don't forget your zakat obligation. The uh, box is on the side here. If you want to mail it in, I'm sorry, if you want to do cash app, it is dollar sign M W S A L A A M. If you want to mail it in, it's 614 West 35th Street, Norfolk, Virginia 23508. Or you can mail it in to our PO box 1802, Norfolk, Virginia 23501. Uh, there will be a community meeting on uh, Sunday, October 30th at 1 o'clock uh, for a community uh, for uh, mass year members. Uh, also, for zakat obligations, I was just thinking of oh, zakat period. There is a pledge that we are trying to have for those people so we can have an acquisition that is very close to being done. So if you want to um, lend some extra to that, you can put that on the uh, zakat form. Uh, tomorrow and Sunday, inshallah, I'll be opening for uh, Fajr. I'll be here around 5.30. Fajr comes in around 6 o'clock. Uh, we will have the art class tomorrow at 11, inshallah. And on Sunday, we will have the uh, revival of the religious sciences um, study with uh, Imam Rashid at 10.30 a.m. Everyone is welcome to, uh, to attend. Some very uh, good information. Uh, a lot of great learning from uh, Imam, the Imam from uh, Virginia Beach. Uh, on at one o'clock on Sunday, we will have the Talim. And if you'd like to be a member, uh, the form is outside on the board. Uh, also, uh, tonight, on Friday nights, I forgot about that. Um, starting last week, we're doing game nights. So we're going to be here from uh, Asr until um, Isha tonight. Uh, we'll be playing a couple of um, games and having a little bit of food. I know this is probably short notice, but uh, we'll be doing, be doing this uh, each each Friday, inshallah, with the uh, intentions to have uh, the masjid open more often. Um, November 5th, um, there's a Muslim family night at Six Flags um, in Baltimore. Uh, so if anybody is interested in that, uh, we're going to have a group that are going to be going there. Um, on that Sunday, there's an art exhibit that we will have at another location. The, uh, the, outs the information for that is outside. For the brother who couldn't make it today, but he has uh, he does great art, and he's uh, having an exhibit on November sixth. And uh, last but not least, we got some snacks uh, in the uh, back. If you if you want some of those, grab those on your way out. And we have some free books in the front as well. Uh, they are for the taking for dawah, so you can give it to whomever. We also have translations of the Quran. So for people who are interested, or if somebody you know that needs a Quran, please grab one, take it, give it to whomever. Assalamu alaikum.